so yeah, I'm Neil Drum. I work for the Drupal Association's engineering team. Uh, so we run uh, Drupal.org, uh, the subsites, uh, the CI systems, and uh, get.drupalcode.org. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, let's see. All right. I think that's going to keep happening. We'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, so why, why GitLab? Uh, so we... The overall project was is improving the developer tools on Drupal.org, uh, and uh, you know, we decided uh, a few years ago that uh, GitLab would be, uh, you know, more effectively use our small team to uh, have more functionality from GitLab. Uh, so, what's happening is. Uh, Account creation, we want to make that process smoother uh, and then allow, yeah, allow login, uh, social sign in, stuff like that. We're not changing projects and releases, those are staying on Drupal.org. Uh, you know, projects, they need some metadata uh, for a project browser and releases, there's a lot of stuff baked into, uh, a lot of things baked into Drupal core, and uh, it's just not something we can realistically do uh, change now, uh, maybe in the future, but uh, yeah, it's not not planned. Uh, Drupal.org, it's a Drupal 7 site, so we need to uh, get things migrated, and part of that is migrate less than less. So simplifying Drupal.org so it will be easier to migrate. GitLab CI, that's pretty much done. Uh, We'll go into that more later. And then uh, issues will, will be last. So account creation is not strictly GitLab. Uh, in the next uh, maybe month or so, uh, the login page on Drupal.org will, uh, will change to a third party. So don't be, don't be alarmed if there's a different, uh, different looking thing to put your password into. Uh, yeah, same password, uh, same two-factor authentication if you have that turned on. Um, and that also helps upgrade to uh, Drupal 10 or later uh, since the old system bakery uh, module that's, I don't know if it has a Drupal 10 version. Uh, we're just going with uh, uh, Key Cloak instead, uh, so, so the third-party service. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, then we can have key, uh, key be responsible for uh, uh, federated login, as in, you know, maybe Drupal Camp New Jersey would like to uh, enable login with, with your Drupal.org profile, or on our login page, uh, we could have login with, Get, uh, login with GitHub, login with GitLab.com. Yeah, don't be, don't that. <laughs> so can we, like, add additional ways for us to sign in that can be used, can be add, so instead of me logging in with my username, can I log in using my, my Mastodon account or something, or is that, that how what this is? Uh, yeah, we could enable that in the future. Okay. Uh, you know, everything in the end, you know, okay. it becomes your account on Drupal.org. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there'll be... Uh, the key click integration, the OpenID Connect module, uh, that still makes a user account on Drupal. Uh, it's just that the login page and reset password page uh, are hosted elsewhere. Okay. And then will there be, it sounds like there'll be some type of contrib module for other sites to take advantage of that? Uh, so, yeah, question was, is, uh, will there be a contrib module for other sites to take advantage of it? I'm hoping with open standards, uh, the module's are already there. Uh, I don't know the names of the modules offhand, oh, but, fair. yeah, on Drupal 7, we're using OpenID Connect module. Uh, I'm sure there's a slightly, di I believe it's slightly different named module on Drupal 10, but, um, the symbol OAuth module, OpenID. 
Yeah, yeah, there's a few different OpenID Connect, which is your own adventures in uh, uh, Drupal 10. So, yeah, hopefully nothing needs to be uh, custom, uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe there's a room for a module that you know, does a little bit of branding and like brings in a Drupal, a Drupal drop login with Drupal.org, that, that stuff. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, and yeah, we're also yeah going on the theme of uh, simplifying account creation and management. We're doing a bit less of that on Drupal.org now. GitLab's taking more of that over. Uh, so uh, there's multiple email addresses that you put into GitLab. It used to be into uh, Drupal.org uh, for. Uh, associating commits with your, your uh, profile on GitLab. Uh, SSH keys moved over. Uh, you know, we used to. Uh, I spent way too much time uh, learning the, how to validate an SSH key. Uh, as far as like, like the every byte being well formed uh, enough for GitLab to accept, uh, and. You know, new with GitLab, uh, you can put GPG keys in for uh, signing. And I believe GitLab, either the current version or the next version, they're adding uh, SSH key signing. So it should be easier than GPG for signing commits. Um, and uh, GitLab is managing notifications for things in GitLab. We're not trying to do any sort of, um, you know, uh, yeah, if there's some activity on a merge request, uh, GitLab's going to notify you about that. So, yeah, again, projects and releases, we're not changing a whole lot. Um, the There might be some changes uh, visually from the project browser that we pull back into Drupal.org uh, since, you know, Drupal.org is the project browser right now. Um, and yeah, again, again with releases, you know, we need the integration with packages. .drupal .org, so you can actually install every release. So yeah, the question was uh, project browser scheduling. Uh, so yeah, one of our other projects in kind of in parallel with this is uh, uh, the first step of the Drupal.org on Drupal 10 will be uh, migrate all of the data related to projects, which ends up spidering out to releases, users, since the users made the projects. Um, um, yeah, all, all the content types and fields around that, um, migrating that to Drupal 10 and uh, having a separate uh, site for that um, available. And the only thing exposed from that site is the uh, JSON API uh, endpoints. And what we'll do is a continuous migration. Uh, so if you update your project on the Drupal 7 site, uh, you know, hopefully within five ten minutes, then it gets uh, goes through all of the migrations and automatically it's in the API. So the schedule of that. Uh, right now, the two kind of biggest priorities are um, uh, the single sign-on stuff. Uh, the reason single sign-on is a priority is we got a grant for that, uh, the, but the grant uh, came with. Uh, they would like it to be done uh, uh, at the end of this month. Uh, so it won't be that done at the end of this month, but uh, we're, they're, they're forgiving <laughs> enough to, uh, they want to see it done. Uh, and then the next priority is uh, automatic updates, so package signing on Drupal.org. Uh, that is a bit of a, also a prerequisite for um, Project Browser. So, uh, 
uh, you know, we don't want project browsers to be in a situation where you can browse the projects, looks great, but you can't install anything or update anything. Uh, so that's next. And then, um, yeah, certainly in the next few months, then the Drupal 10 site for uh, the data uh, for a project browser. That's one of the next priorities. Uh, and then, uh, since I've talked about our overall what we're doing, like there's ongoing maintenance, like uh, we, four drives uh, died a couple weeks ago. So replacing drives um, and you know, everything else that could go wrong. Uh, So, uh, yeah, notifications, uh, that's something you definitely should look at. Uh, we didn't enable that by default. Uh, so if you, want get la if you want more email, uh, this is where to go get more email. <laughs> uh, project pages, so those have simplified a little bit. Uh, it's actually been probably a couple years now. Uh, uh, project pages, they used to have how many commits are on, uh, on the top right. Uh, and uh, so that's gone now. We don't have a database of all of the recent commits or who's committed what. So um, we can't have it on project pages. Um, and yeah, when issues move, uh, all of this issues information on the bottom right, that's probably going to go away. Uh, we don't have a, you know, Drupal, you know, we can just do a ND field query or view for that sort of thing. Um, if, it's not, if it's not Drupal, we have a harder time counting it. It's an API request or, you know, could be a lot of API requests. Uh, same, with, same sort of thing with profile pages. Uh, you know, there used to be a list of how many commits you made to every module. Uh, that's one of those things where that, that would be a lot of API requests in GitLab. So uh, we got rid of it uh, and replaced it with a uh, it's just a simple list of projects you maintain. Uh, and uh, but there is a link to your uh, Drupal code profile, which uh, you know we're going to let GitLab do the things that's good at. They uh, they have like the uh, heat map of what days of the week it, you work on in <laughs> uh, a feed of activity there. Uh, and yeah, another thing that GitLab has provided that we didn't have before is code search. Uh, the trick to that is if you want to search across all projects, uh, there's a group um, thing to the right. We only index the uh, the project group. Uh, we don't index every issue for it. Uh, and where most of the effort's been last few months is uh, GitLab CI. So uh, Drupal CI, it was, uh, it's been through a couple iterations, uh, but yeah, it was very bespoke, built for Drupal.org. And, uh, and Drupal. Uh, and, but GitLab CI, it's, uh, yeah, it's proving to be uh, better, more flexible. Uh, the main difference is Drupal CI, it, it solved testing for modules, um, but uh, there's a lot of things that kind of go, go outside that lane. So, uh, GitLab CI, uh, you know, you really have a, uh, you could do anything that fits into uh, their uh, format uh, for configuring it. Uh, and, you know, a lot of it's still the same. Uh, they both run uh, a script inside Drupal core called runtests.sh. So it's, a lot of it's replacing the outside of how tests get triggered. So you could build your GitLab pages as part of the GitLab CI job. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so uh, if you maintain a module, uh, you need to set up a GitLab CI.yaml file. Uh, 
uh, if you want testing, and uh, there's templates and shared configurations. So you're not making all of this stuff from scratch, uh, and that replaces uh, the UI of Drupal CI that you see if, that you used to see on Drupal.org, and um, yeah, all of the configuration. So uh, I linked uh, these. I did get these slides on the uh, schedule on the Drupal Camp New Jersey site, so you don't have to try typing that in. Uh, but yeah, there's documentation on how to use those templates, how to set up set up a project. Uh, the GitLab channel on Drupal Slack. Uh, really, my coworker uh, Fran uh, did um, a lot of the work on GitLab's templates, pulling that together. Um, and then, and he's answering uh, everyone's questions in Drupal Slack. And uh, Drupal CI, we're, we're turning that off uh, July 2024. So uh, you, know, you may have noticed uh, the console output uh, on dispatcher.drupal.org, that went away. Uh, the reason that went away is there was a Jenkins security update. Um, we just decided to Instead of updating that Jenkins instance is scary because we don't do it very often. We don't have staging or anything. So we removed access from the internet to it uh, rather than risking the upgrade. So uh, it's not something sustainable. It'll be turned off. Uh, and yeah, the big thing with uh, get uh, one of the big things with GitLab CI is it has no idea what a patch file is. It, it works on merge requests, so uh, core moved to basically requiring merge requests. Uh, I want to say a couple months ago, two or three months ago, um, and I, yep. this. I don't know exactly what that X implies, but people use that. <coughs> Apart from GitLab CI, right, in their own composer JSON files and their in their own CI or local processes, and I know that GitLab automatically generates patches. If you just put a dot patch at the end of the merge request URL, it just does it. But from a uh, really? UX standpoint, yeah. yeah, it's really nice. It's <laughs> really good. So does GitHub. Yeah, but from a UX standpoint, not a lot of people know that, right? <laughs> um, so it, will there be like still a button or something to let people? know how to find the patch easily so it doesn't break their workflow. So uh, for finding the patches uh, that uh, based on merge requests, uh, yeah, you could download a patch file from a merge request. Uh, GitLab hides that in the UI. There's like a three dot menu <coughs> on the top right and it's uh, worded something like download diff uh, or yeah, no, the exact wording. But yeah, it's, it's in the GitLab UI. Okay, I, I think a lot of people will find it, but uh, and maybe that can be fixed in documentation. <laughs> well, okay. uh, the issue on Drupal.org also has a link to the plain. Yeah, so we on Drupal.org to kind of help onboard people. We do have the plain diff link, um, but you know, yeah, well, that's the, that'll go away. Well, that'll go away. Well, why not keep it? Uh, well, because you can just link. We'll get to uh, further uh, in the presentation. We're going to migrate issues. All right. Uh, so uh, another thing that's very important on applying patches with Composer, don't give Composer that merge request diff uh, directly. Don't give it an arbitrary thing to download from the internet and patch your site with. Because it'll change. Uh, so save a copy locally uh, with your code base. Uh, yeah, use it. Do your QA process, uh, and yeah, hopefully, I mean the whole thing. Ideally, I mean this is a whole separate thing, but ideally, be you know Drupal's the only project I think about patching in production. To be ide ideal to not do that, but it's the world we live in. Um, oh, and uh, the test only patches and inner diffs, you don't have to do all of that. That's, um, 
the test only testing, that's all automated, uh, as in um, the GitLab, uh, part of the GitLab templates uh, in the CI system are uh, a build step to test the code base with only the tests changed to prove that your uh, the test to, Drupal core requires a new test for every uh, change pretty much and they require validation that the test is actually testing something. So, uh, really the flexibility of GitLab CI kind of kicked off a uh, uh, a lot of people trying new things and they got uh, core tests runs down to 12 minutes uh, by there were some performance improvements, uh, some uh, uh, a lot of just running more stuff in parallel. Uh, can use your own containers. So if you, uh, you know, this is something that I don't think was possible in Drupal CI, uh, but the now GitLab CI makes it obviously easy. The you know, if you're running the Elastic Search mod, if you're building the Elastic Search module, you can bring in a Elastic container uh, too. Uh, test with an actual Elasticsearch instance. Now, how do you prevent people from just running arbitrary stuff? CI system, it runs arbitrary stuff anyway. So, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you're running arbitrary PHP uh, to begin with, so, yeah. yeah. So how does it work, like, cost-wise? Because we're, we're, we're hosting GitLab. So the so, automated tests are still running on infrastructure that yeah. is paying for, right? Yep. Cost-wise, it's about 20000 a month. But it's a lot less because tests are so much faster? Mm, no. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so explain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually, I have a slide about costs at the end. Thank you. Uh, so, you already said that a big part of the reason tests are faster is that we're doing them in parallel, which doesn't save any money. So uh, the let's see what else with GitLab CI. Uh, there's uh, spell checking, core added uh, C spell uh, integration, and uh, now that's available to everyone uh, through the GitLab uh, the CI templates uh, and more linting step, uh, steps. Uh, Composer J JSON linting's new to new to me. Uh, and there is a default uh, configuration for GitLab pages uh, in, uh, if you want to use it. Uh, I'm going to come back. Sure. Okay. Uh, all right. So issues. Uh, so issues are going to be migrated towards uh, GitLab. Uh, the thing we want to to preserve this, I think, different in Drupal than uh, a lot of projects is um, there's multiple, it's normal for multiple people to contribute to a single issue. Uh, so in the last year, 5.3 5 pe 5 people on average are credited for every core issue. Uh, and you know, I think outside of Drupal, you see a lot of you know, one person, one merge request. Uh, so that's why we're doing things a little differently. Is that people credited only include code contributions? Uh, everything that the core maintainers uh, credit for, and they do credit for non-code as well. Uh, and yeah, we want we to keep our issue credit system, uh, but GitLab does not have an issue credit system. So that will be, uh, let's see. Oh, right, yeah, so we're gonna rebuild the issue credit system. Uh, it'll still be on Drupal. Uh, there'll be pointers to go uh, fill out the Drupal page uh, to either as a contributor, say, are you a volunteer? Are you working with organizations? And as the maintainer, uh, you know, who who gave you a productive uh, contribution and uh, deserves credit. 
and uh, yeah, issue. And remember, uh, when we say credit, there's issue credit. That's what's changing. Uh, all the other stuff, uh, like contributor roles, supporting projects, uh, doc maintaining documentation, that's also credit. Like anything that's on your user profile page, anything that's on your organization page, I consider that credit. And uh, yeah, issue credit is what we'll be moving around. Uh, and yeah, in GitLab in the future, you will see uh, uh, some sort of bot uh, pointing you towards, uh, you know, you should update uh, the information for crediting. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be re rebuilding the issue credit uh, in Drupal 10. Uh, it's kind of in a proof of concept stage right now, uh, but I think we can take over the whole page instead of taking it in with everything else on the issue page. We'll have more space to uh, explain everything uh, and more UX, uh, yeah, more space for the UX to spread out. Uh, some of the preparation for issue migration has happened, as in, uh, you know, there are go issues going to be on a separate site. We can't do cross-references to issues like we did before, like the uh, coloring and uh, expanding the title of an issue. Uh, that just, uh, some of that's moving more towards front end uh, than, so a front, uh, in JavaScript, it'll do a request over to GitLab and see, is it open or closed? Should it be red or green? Uh, so inventorying all of that and uh, decoupling anything that references issues. Uh, when the issue migration actually starts, uh, once we've, you know, we'll put the new credit system in place with the existing issues, uh, so you'll see that first, and then uh, the actual issue migration, uh, that'll be project by project, kind of how we did GitLab CI, and then, uh, you know, once a couple hundred projects have proved it out, uh, then uh, we'll, and it won't write great core at some point, and then migrate every project. Uh, and that's kind of in proof of concept st stage as well. Uh, sort of issues we're, so uh, sort of problems we're solving is, you know, Drupal, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, Drupal has, you know, those, uh, was it six or uh, seven uh, select menus of uh, issue status and priority. Um, GitLab doesn't have any of that. There's no fieldable, uh, nothing fieldable in GitLab. Uh, so everything's a label. Uh, GitLab has scoped labels. And uh, so we're deciding stuff uh, like does, you know, and these are all per project in GitLab. So if you don't want feature requests in your project, you don't have to have those uh, unless we decide that uh, there's standard labels for every pro project. But we're, we're thinking, we're uh, thinking to, you know, go with the GitLab default. You don't get, you might not get any labels out of the box for a new project. Um, there might not be a standard feature request uh, label uh, or a standard uh, priority label. Should I push back and say, I feel like that's actually gonna make the experience a lot worse. Not to standardize them. Like I, I think it'd be great to even let the maintainer add a couple more, but to not have like a standard set that all projects use seems terrible. Yeah. So there is a open issue to uh, <laughs> okay. help decide this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I personally, I, I don't like the priority uh, thing because that's just uh, the reporter's priority and your priority as a maintainer are never the same, and it's not worth arguing. It doesn't matter. So for my projects uh, I maintain, I, I was just get rid of all the priorities. Um, and of course, uh, you know, if we do go towards the uh, more uh, blank slate uh, approach, then, uh, a project that's migrated, they'll have all the labels migrated. We're not going throwing away any data with migration. So uh, existing projects will have those set uh, 
those labels set up. So yeah, review this again, and how am I doing on time? Plenty of time. Uh, so uh, yeah, I had a question earlier about costs. Overall, costs are pretty much equivalent uh, uh, for CI and for uh, running GitLab itself. Um, so the for GitLab, there's you know it's a migration. There's a huge upfront cost to do the migration, have it be smooth. Uh, you know, uh, my coworkers are spending a lot of time mentoring people on uh, GitLab CI. Uh, you know, it's, it's time uh, costs money, uh, and we're replacing issues with credit records. There, you know, there'll be a few less fields, uh, but. You know, it's one content type to another content type. That's going to be roughly the same. Uh, um, you know, cost to maintain. There's migrations and uh, uh, everything. Uh, GitLab CI it runs faster uh, by mostly going in more in parallel. Uh, there probably was some a uh, little bit of cost savings per test where core. Um, I have a specific examples of core tests that were doing dumb, slow things uh, now, but I know one from a few years ago was uh, there was like an image rotation test that was tested all 360 degrees. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you can test maybe three of them at most and to prove that you can rotate an image. Uh, so, yeah. The process of uh, you know, GitLab CI got a little faster, and then the core maintainers uh, saw, oh, now we we want to make this even faster. There's a little bit more of, a, of a observability of what parts are slow. So there were some parts of core tests that got faster as far as like less compute. Uh, on the other hand, tests run about 12 minutes for core patches. People are more likely to. Uh, Run more tests, <laughs> um, and yeah, the infrastructure changed from. Uh, I don't remember the AWS product name before, but you know, spin up a bunch of EC2 instances. It's changed to Kubernetes. The AWS posted Kubernetes, and that spins up EC2 instances. Instances. There might be some cost savings with. Uh, Packing the containers differently into VMs, uh, we have a pending kind of version two of that Kubernetes cluster uh, ready to deploy. Um, not on a Friday when uh, people are at camps and stuff. So Neil, just out of curiosity, so how much bespoke code is there in Drupal CI that's going away in July? The uh, so question was, how much bespoke, bespoke code for Drupal CI is going away? Uh, so that's, like, that's where the real savings is, right? That's yeah, yeah. July is, yeah, we'll, we'll shut off the Jenkins server, uh, basically. Um, and that was scary, unmaintain, unmaintainable infrastructure. Uh, that's the windmill right there. Yeah. Uh, and actually, so, yeah, while we're running both Drupal CI and GitLab CI costs are higher because we're running both. Uh, let's see. And yeah, on the Drupal side, uh, we'll get rid of the project issue file test module, which is probably a thousand or so lines of code, maybe maybe two or three thousand, I don't know offhand. But uh, yeah, we'll keep that part on for. Uh, another six months, so you'll be able to see the test results on drupal.org if something was tested uh, June 29th. Those will still be available for six months as they usually are, and then um, yeah, we'll turn off that Drupal code uh, start of next year. And Drupal CI, it also, so GitLab CI is still using the same, uh, we're building our own containers for PHP, MySQL. Um, so that's all staying the same. Uh, someone stepped up to help maintain it. Uh, Andy Post, which is great. Uh, 
plus uh, Sandy Post is better at it than we were uh, as the station staff. Um, and yeah, GitLab, it requires maintenance itself. Uh, there's about two, last few months, there's been two security updates for GitLab every month. Uh, and yeah, those are all automated. Uh, they go pretty smoothly now. People aren't noticing the couple minutes of downtime, or at least they're not complaining about it. Um, but yeah, that takes time uh, to at least just trigger the update. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, if you're not a Drupal Association member, uh, think about being a member. It also funds uh, uh, you apps and programs that are um, uh, you know helping. We're going to do more marketing of Drupal, more uh, uh, you know discover Drupal, bring new people into the community, and uh, our new uh, CEOs had more of a worldwide community focus. Uh, partnerships. Yeah. I'm not sure I got the big picture. In the long term, you're going to port Drupal.org to Drupal 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. So, what's the kind of time frame when you think you'll go off of Drupal 7? So, time frame for moving Drupal.org completely off Drupal 7. Um, we haven't been good at estimating. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, once issues are moved, uh, you know, credit will. Uh, so, from the project browser initial Drupal 10 launch, then on top of that, we'll build uh, uh, the credit system. So, you'll be kind of logging into both sites, and that's also the single sign on. Uh, so, they'll appear as one site. Some paths will go to, you know, if you go to issue credit slash whatever, it'll be the Drupal 10 site. If you go somewhere else, it'll be the Drupal 7 site. And then that'll us migrate piece by piece. Uh, you know, at some point, then, you know, you're editing your user profile. That'll be on Drupal 10. And yeah, we don't have a overall exact timeline. Hopefully by the, uh, once the Drupal 7 end of life date, January 2025. Yeah, hopefully by then, <laughs> January 2025. <laughs> That's that very um, less than nine months. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, yeah, ways to help you know use merge requests and get LabCI CI, help test uh, things as they become available. It'll be it'll be a little while before you see the opportunity to migrate issues. Uh, you know, we need to get the crediting piece fix, uh, solved uh, with, and then you know before that, all of the other immediate priorities. Uh, and yeah, GitLab on Drupal Slack for uh, questions and help. Uh, any other questions in the room? Uh, I've been paying attention recently, but uh, Tom said you're killing off the group site. Is it still there? Uh, so, yeah, we still have the Drupal 6 site, groups.drupal.org. Yeah. Yes, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there any chance you archive it or give us the opportunity to archive, have an archive of our group content? Uh, yes, yeah, we'll certainly archive the group content if, uh, if we shut it off. Uh, the Overall plan is to move it into merge it into Drupal.org. Um, Drupal.org actually does have the organic groups module installed and has some concept of what groups are and um, community events. Those are already on Drupal.org. So uh, and that's another project where uh, we had a. Uh, had an intern build a proof of concept of, of that over a year ago, and we haven't had a chance to clean it up and sure. get that deployed. So does that mean you're going to be investing in the OG module for Drupal 10? Uh, I don't know which, uh, so the question was uh, OG module for Drupal 10. I don't re I remember if we uh, have decided on group versus OG versus something else, but uh, we'll We'll pick the best, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. 
could you show us how to find the test only job in GitLab CI? Um, maybe. I, what is the test only job here? So, uh, the test only job, if you were contributing to the core, they used to ask you to uh, make a test only patch. Uh, sure. So, filter out the tests make a patch of that so it can prove that the tests fail if right. the code change isn't there. The right. whole thing was like, why are you asking people to do do that? Like, it should have been automated. Uh, so it's automated now. Uh, let's see. If, if you can open a browser and, and go to an issue that has uh, an, an active merge request, I, I, I can. Yeah. But it's not at all obvious. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how well I do with not actually seeing my screen. Uh, uh, yeah, I think let's let's look at that afterwards because I I don't know offhand. <laughs> let's see if I close that. Okay, cool. That's the presentation again. But I think we're out at time, and uh, they probably have lunch set out. Uh, is there any like, housekeeping we need to say? Or? Uh, 